Hi, everybody. This is Tony D'Angelo of Collegiate Empowerment. For those of you who participated in our latest teleseminar called How to Prevent the End of Semester Burnout, well, I want to say thank you for joining us today. For those of you who did not have a chance to see us, here's an opportunity to reconnect with some of the concepts and tools that we covered during the free teleseminar. Keep in mind, this is a monthly, ongoing, complimentary service provided to you, the student affairs professional, from we at Collegiate Empowerment. So there are two key tools. Number one tool was called the Urgent versus Important Clarifier, in which we went to back to good old Dr. Stephen Covey, the man who wrote The Seven Habits, but this is his really, really good book called Putting First Things First. And in that book, he talks about a quadrant called the Quadrant to Living. The second tool that we went through, I'm going to show you in just a moment, was a concept called the quarterly game plan. But let's start with quick review of the time system utilizing the four quadrants. So basically what Dr. Covey has helped us identify is that there's four quadrants of how we choose to use our time. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Actually, it's quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Just make sure you pay attention. Now, the power in this is quadrant one is doing things that are both urgent and important, okay? Urgent and important. These are crises. These are accidents. These are deadline-driven activities, uh, commitments. If you have a seminar that you got to do, an event you got to put on, that's living in quadrant one. Now, where most professionals live in this area, they also have a tendency to only live on this side. In other words, the side of urgency. And we like to say something silly, but very true at Collegiate Empowerment is this. Most student affairs professionals love to put out fires. The only problem is you're a bunch of arsonists. Knock it off. And what I mean by that, sorry, you know I love you. What I'm trying to say here is that most people, rather than just live in quadrant one, they live in quadrant three. And that is doing things that are urgent, yet when you go below the quadrant, it's doing things that are not important. And they lose meaning and purpose for you. These are the interruptions. These are the things where your time is stolen. Remember, we talked about time is like money. Here, you're spending. It's a fair exchange. You break your leg, it's a crisis. You gotta go to the doctors. Here, somebody else comes by and breaks your leg, all right? In other words, here it's a fair exchange. Down here, it's actually stolen. In other words, so often this happens in student affairs. You have these interruptions, these constant phone calls. There's no strategic, it's just all urgent reaction, reaction, reaction response. So the idea is we wanna basically get our time back from getting out of here. Now, before I go to quadrant two, is let me touch upon quadrant four. Quadrant four is actually something that you probably haven't done for a very long time. It's the quadrant where you actually waste your time. It's doing things that are urgent, pardon me, not urgent and not important. So it's, sometimes it's mindless things like when you go on Facebook and you get sucked back into seeing yourself and your friends and your buddies and your, and your, and your girlfriends from when you were in three year, and third grade, you know what I'm talking about? That's quadrant four living. Most professionals that we engage with don't come into this area, okay? Now, we also recommend there's actually therapy and therapeutic value in our other time system we teach called the time empowerment system. That would be constituted as a peace day where you're actually purposely just relaxing. The key quadrant that we want us all to be more present to, more tuned into, is this quadrant. It's quadrant number two. That is the quadrant in which you're not spending your time, you're not wasting your time, and God forbid you're not having your time stolen from you. In this quadrant, this is the quadrant in which you are investing your time. And you start to get a rate of return that is exponential for you. You see, when you live in quadrant two, this is areas of your life, like you were on the call right now, probably you are on the call with us earlier, or you're with me right now watching this. Watching this video, is it urgent? No. Okay. Is it important? Yes. Why? Because it's helping you grow as a human being. Now, if you see some of my other videos on YouTube, they could be quadrant three and four. Um, you're wasting your time, but none of these ones that we post up here. The idea is this. When you take time to work not just in your life, but you work on your life, you exercise, you journal, you do planning, you do relationship building, you do professional development, you prepare, you rehearse, you get ready, you're doing cleanups to really renew yourself. This is really where your life becomes transformative. This is where you write the book. This is where you have that deep conversation with that other human being that you know you need to have. This is the place where you find the depth of your being. 
It is in this area, quadrant two. So as a professional, my recommendation to you is this. Feel the guilt. Do it anyway. Give yourself permission to leave the office at 5 o'clock. Go outside for a beautiful walk. Take some time to study something that you're passionate about. Take an hour out of the morning and live in quadrant two and write the book that you know you want to be writing. Take your life to that next level. And you're going to find that next life in this area, quadrant two. So that's the construct we set you up with. Now, let me flip the flip chart here and show you the framework of thinking to support you of really putting an actual tool into practice to support your growth. Now, remember, the title of the teleseminar was How to Prevent the End of the Semester Burnout. And here's the problem with the semester way of thinking. Semester way of thinking basically thinks like this, is that you basically have a, a fall semester, you have a break, and then you have a spring semester. Okay? If you continue to do this pattern that we talked about, you're always going to get burnout. Why? Because the research shows that the average time frame to truly be strategic is 100 days. The average semester nationwide is approximately between 122 to 123 days. 23, actually, as I like to say, it's 33 more days too long than what you really should be focusing on. So what's the new time structure we're going to introduce you to? It's the one that Mother Nature introduced you to. It's that there's a season. That, In other words, every 90 days, Mother Nature changes the seasons. And so, too, we want to think about our year in what we call the quarter system. Okay? Now, this is not the quarter system of academia. This is the quarter system of business, of organizational development. Basically, what you see here is I'm drawing up three, pardon me, four quarters, three-month period. In other words, every 90 days, you have an opportunity to renew and reinvent yourself. So rather than just in the fall and in the spring, and then you're burnt out here and you're sick here, what it allows you to do is think in the terms of quad, uh, probably quarter one, which basically would be winter, okay? So it's January, February, and it's March. Q2 is where you're currently in right now as we did this recording. That is the spring, okay? which is basically April, May, and June, all right? And then Q3 is the summer, all right? And that consists of July, August, and September. Now, it's interesting to note this. If we go back to the semester mindset, the fall semester actually begins in August, which is right in the center of the third quarter. It's basically in the middle of the summer, yet we call it the fall semester. See. Language is important because our words create our reality. And if we don't align with reality out there, we create chaos and actually despair in ourselves personally. The last quarter is Q4. This consists of October, November, and December. So the idea here is this. If you start to think about the other construct which we teach at Collegiate Empowerment, which is called the four-year quantum leap, in other words, forget about your lifetime goals and just focus on the current four-year framework, each year breaks down of those four years into four other smaller components, or four quarters. So four times four, it's heavy math, come along with me, is 16. So in other words, if you use the construct of the x-factor question, the four-year framework, and you break that down year by year, you actually have 16 opportunities to refocus, to renew, to re-engage yourself both personally and professionally. So. If you want to know how to prevent the end of semester burnout, do what you're doing right now. Live in quadrant two. That's right, two, baby. Feel the guilt. Do it anyway. If you know it's important to you, but it's not urgent, it's powerful. And that's how you're going to transform your life and thereby your students' lives. Now, once you have that mindset into perspective, put into practice a planning structure that still honors the semester. I mean, you're not going to recreate the world. Don't try and do it but it can change and transform your own world and start to think in 90-day increments so that every 90 days I get better in every day in every way. And guess what? Say you have a bad winter. What's nice is you don't have to wait till the end of the spring semester. You can end the winter as it should be, as Mother Nature does for you, and renew yourself so that you have a fresh start in April to go to June. And then June, you might have had a chance to really grow. So that in the summer of July, August, and September, boom, you're out there at a whole new level 
so that in the autumn, in the fall, you can, in October, November, December, truly reap the harvest of all the seeds you've sown throughout that year. And that's the power of the quarterly game plan framework of thinking. So, on behalf of myself, Joe Urbanski, our, our host and moderator, and everybody here at Collegiate Empowerment, this is Tony D'Angelo saying thank you to you for feeling guilt, doing it anyway, and taking time to really honor yourself. To your continued success, and we'll touch base and see you all next month. Bye-bye.